And we are live. Uh, my name is Federico Re, and this is Inspire Talk Radio, a show that is aired all around the world on Google Hangout. And um, I'm your host for tonight. And with me, I'll, I have a very uh, special guest uh, that I'll introduce in just a moment. In fact, he's my youngest guest so far to date um, on, on, on the show. And um, essentially, Inspire Talk is about attracting game changers or industry disruptors in whatever industry, particularly in the world of business where we like to explore the mindsets of such individuals um, and to see what they've been up to in their lives and also where they're planning to go with their businesses or careers. And um, without saying too much more, I'd like to formally introduce uh, Taj Pabari. How are you doing, Taj? Good evening. Absolute pleasure to have you tonight, uh, Taj. And uh, you're, you're in sunny Brisbane. Um, I'm assuming the weather's always steady and warm at this time of year. Oh, exactly. The beautiful Brisbane, Brisbane, I guess. <laughs> Look, um, it's an absolute pleasure to have you tonight. Um, obviously, this time of night, there's plenty of other things you'll be, you, you should be doing, perhaps even study for that matter. And I'll give um, our, our uh, audiences a bit of a clue. Taj is um, a 17-year-old entrepreneur. In fact, uh, I've got him down as an inventor, a social entrepreneur and educational pioneer. And he's also the founder of 56 uh, Creations. Uh, and as you've described yourself, Taj, um, on your social media sites, um, you've been featured on a number of um, media channels, including National Geographic, 60 Minutes, Sunrise, and a host of other media channels. And you're actually the winner of uh, the Australian Young Innovator of the Year for 2014. What, a, what an mm. amazing accolade of, of achievements for a 17-year-old. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was been very lucky and yeah, grateful for the media support, actually. Well, you, you must be doing something right, and I guess someone at your at your stage of life um, normally would be just studying or completing year twelve as you're doing, but at the same time you're also you know building a business and and doing it very successfully. Um, Taj, tonight I'd like to really pick your brain about what it feels like to be a young entrepreneur, and um, I think uh, your your age is certainly changing the benchmark in terms of how young um, are entrepreneurs uh, becoming these days. Um, as I was saying to you off air, I was 22 when I started my business. Uh, I, I thought that was young, but you know, starting at, um, I think you started at the age of 12 or 13, is that right? First business at 11, 56 at 13 and a half. So yeah. Fantastic. That's awesome. So look, in, in that period of time, you, you've, you've achieved a lot and I'd really like to uh, start picking your brain in terms of where you've been and, and what you're doing. So in a nutshell, Tell us a little bit about 56 Creations. What, what is it that it does? Yeah, definitely. So 56 is a social enterprise and we've designed and developed to build yourself tablet and coding kit for kids uh, as easy as a puzzle as fun as a computer game. So set out, I loved Lego as a kid. I loved ICT and was like, you know what? Wouldn't it be amazing to create the Lego for the 21st century? And got started with this goal, few challenges obviously with hardware, with supplies, with manufacturers, with designs, all of that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, three, 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 four years and I think now, um, and we've educated around 43,000 kids um, around the globe. That's awesome. So your, your target market is fundamentally children in, in what age group? Uh, six to 16. So from primary school all the way um, yeah, to, 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 to the end of middle school. Okay, and and what in, what inspired you fundamentally to go into that industry and and provide a solution or some sort of tech, technical device that helps with education? What was your main reason? Mm -hmm. All right, good, good question. And the reason education, I think, as the industry first of all was. Um, so I'm a student, um, grade twelve right now, and started my education journey obviously in preschool, like most of us, and wasn't hugely, um, wasn't the best student in the school, as we discussed before, and by grade six was suspended three, four times, and was pretty much told, hey, you need to sort yourself out or find a new school, and decided to sort myself out, and decided that, you know, what entrepreneurship seems, seems kind of cool, and this is something I could do in the future, and loved, was really inspired by people like Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Tony Robbins, and really set out, a, set out of a goal from a very young age that I wanted to be like them. I wanted to change the world like these people. So started my first business at 11, which was a tech blog for kids by kids, super simple. And within the first few months, we were getting over 100,000 hits per day, $10 per day from advertisements. 
at the age, age of 11, we were just like, hey, this, this, this is kind of cool. Um, and it was my first real taste of the world of entrepreneurship uh, at the age of 13. Uh, combined that love for Lego, love for ICT to create the Lego for the 21st century, which was 56 creations and took a liking to education straight away and was just like, you know what, I'm a student. I have access to so many students in the classroom anyway. And we thought, wow, this is an amazing opportunity to not only impact the kids that can afford it in the private schools, the international schools, uh, the people in the regions like Australia, the UK, etc., but also going into the rural communities, going into places like India, all um, and giving them access to all world-class education. That's um, that's inspiring what you're doing, and and it's funny how you talk about having a particular mindset. And I often regard the entrepreneurs, the serial entrepreneurs, as rebellious. And you know, hearing you speak, certainly at the age of 11, 12, 13, you're defying the odds, going against the grain um, of what traditionally you should be doing at that age. In, in fact, still now. Um, and I'd like to understand at what stage in your life did you actually think that you were entrepreneurial? Um, did you have some kind of foresight or vision even earlier than that? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Recognise very early that maybe the traditional pathway, the schooling pathway, the university, junior job, senior job pathway probably wasn't for me. Um, not saying it's not a good pathway, it just wasn't for me. And thought, all right, well, if it's not for me, then what is? And Business seemed like an awesome avenue to go down. The, the fact that I could impact people um, regardless of my age, age is just a number. And um, I too could change the world and recognize that very early. Um, was inspired, had um, awesome role models, attended some awesome seminars, Tony Robbins being, I think, one of the flagship ones that really inspired me and changed, really shifted my mindset, the fact that Yes, age is really just a number. Um, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. You can change the world. You need to have the determination, the mindset, the energy uh, to, to, to see your idea going global, uh, to see your idea. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you, do, yeah. you talk about role models and, and that positive energy, uh, and certainly you need that when you're going through the highs and lows. And there's also the opposite force, um, which often I call the skeptics and sometimes your peers. And I'm assuming that at your age, um, a lot of your peers would be looking at you either with doubt, with even envy, or perhaps yeah. with some cynicism. What's your experience so far on, on that level? Yeah, yeah, all right. So I'm a big believer of success by association. You surround yourselves with absolutely awesome people. Some of that awesomeness generally does rub off on you. In turn, when you surround yourself with uh, not so awesome people, that not so awesomeness does rub, on, rub off on you as well. Now, as entrepreneurs, when we have our highs, they're a lot higher than the average human being. And when we have our lows, they are a lot lower than the average human being. And I think surrounding yourself with people who, um, not, for me, in the classroom, being able to surround myself with people my age, 16, 17, 18 years old, um, who, who are following a very traditional path and have been awesome. Having people, obviously, who, role models who can push you forward outside of the classroom, um, who can really inspire you. Have obviously that that that's integral, but also being able to just relax and chill and um, ensure you're not um, you're not completely um, uh, 24 hour, 27, 24 hours focused um, and potentially drained. Um, obviously, entrepreneurship can be a very draining activity when you're launching a business. Um, you really need to be a jack of all trades. And when we started the venture, I was 13 and a half. My co-founder was 18, and we were pretty much doing everything at the time. And I think just ensuring that we did have um, a lot of energy was quite difficult at the start. And um, I think as, as we went through the journey, as we started building our team, as we started building our skill sets in particular, um, we recognized the fact that we just need to have those normal friends, people you could just go to the movies with, you could have fun with, you could um, go to the theme park with. And I think that just, I only recognized how important these things were quite recently. Um, and for me, I think that's been really nice just being able to relax with, with, with my friends at school, um, having business aside um, and just being able to be, be a teenager ultimately. Yeah, look, I can certainly relate to those early years of, of my various business ventures, the humble beginnings, but, but also learning how to balance um, your life, you know, during such a hectic stage of, of growth in a business. Um, mm -hmm. And with that comes... Uh, a particular mindset or attitude or attributes or skill sets that, that you need to have to be able to tolerate that in the long term 
um, mm. such as endurance, perseverance. But apart from that, what are, what other attributes do you think you need to have as a teenage entrepreneur? I mean, I'm, mm. I'm very used to talking to experienced entrepreneurs in their 20s, 30s, 40s plus, uh, but I often don't, re- don't, don't often come across people of your age. So from your perspective, what attributes do you need to have that are unique for teenage entrepreneurs? Um, yeah, that's, I think that's a really good question. And um, for me, I think um, I, I'm a big advocate that every single, every single person, every single young person should start a business. I'm not saying every single person should be in business, but everyone should start a business. When you start a business, we know, and I'm sure most of the viewers um, will, will attest to this as well, that you end up learning so much from starting a business. You learn about soft skills. You learn about public speaking, communication, being able to just hold a conversation. And that's not stuff that school's teaching us. We're at school, we're there. We're, we're pretty much exported. We're, at school, we're exporting walking, talking textbooks. And um, I think from starting a business, you, you learn to adapt, you learn to learn, so to fail while simultaneously learn. And I think that stuff you can only learn from starting a business. And as I said before, I'm not saying everyone should be in business, but just starting a business will teach a child so much. Um, and for me, that's what I advocate to a lot of my friends. So after school, even, I'm not saying drop out of school, not saying drop out of uni or don't go to university. Um, Start a business whilst you're at university. You will learn so, so much from starting a business that's going to take you leap and bounds ahead from your peers, from other applicants. Um, employers, PwC, Deloitte, KPMG have got the criteria of a university degree. Uh, as I said before, not saying these things aren't, aren't important, but for um, traditional institutions have, have recognised the fact that success in traditional education does not necessarily correlate to success in the real world. Um, so starting a business um, could be a very attractive option um, and is an attractive option to, I think, a lot of young people. So Yeah, yeah interesting. Um, I've got a question actually coming through from uh, Jan, and Jan's basically asking, uh, what's your biggest mistake? And, and that's in connection with your comment about failure, experiencing failure is, yeah. is okay. So what is what has been your biggest mistake so far? Yeah, definitely. Team team for me was I've made many mistakes with uh, w- w- with managing a team. Uh, HR is obviously massive for a small business. Making sure that you've got that absolutely killer culture in the in the company where our our, our name fifty six means opportunity in numerology, and we really wanted our our our, our company culture to be around that. Making sure that regardless of whether the people answering the admin people, our facilitators, our designers, developers uh, are providing opportunity to everyone. And I think initially we had a lot of issues with our team. I didn't know how to communicate and just being able to entering the business world from a very young age does teach you. It's a very steep learning curve and um, just being able to um, share your ideas, um, challenge other people's ideas, challenge your team's ideas was really difficult for me when I first started. And, um, yeah, for team team was difficult. Obviously, hiring hiring was was difficult. I wanted um, – initially, when I was hiring, I was hiring people that were very similar to me. And I thought, well, if they're similar to me um, in terms of their persona, in terms of their ideologies, we'd be perfect. And it wasn't until I spoke to, 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 to a guy named Nathan Kinch. He's moved over to London now, and I sat with him um, in Melbourne, actually, and – um, this is when I was having a lot of team issues we, within my team and we were having a lot of team departures, resignations, etc. And he said, hey, instead of hiring people like you, try the complete opposite of you. People who have completely different um, ideologies, people who have completely different skill sets, people who are the complete opposite of you. And we did that straight away and our team is just buzzing because we all challenge each other's ideas. We've all got such different backgrounds, ideologies, cultures. And for us, that was an amazing piece of advice that um, I received from someone. And I think our team team issues just straightened out straight away. And Interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, thinking unconventionally and, and, and sometimes in the opposite sense uh, does give you the answer. And I do recall in my past experience that hiring um, professionals that actually don't come from within the industry uh, but right. actually possess knowledge from other industries that might at face value um, feel unrelated or, or irrelevant actually brings in a different perspective or different dimension um, and, and certainly I can add that to the list as well. Um, so that's that's great advice, Taj. Um, I like your your sense of humility. Um, or you're just a humble bloke, I guess, in terms of admitting that you have made mistakes 
um, perhaps in the leadership role. But I guess I personally would not expect much more at your age to be an exceptional leader. And it's something that you do acquire and learn from 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 experience and wisdom. And having having said that, um, what is your experience so far or your philosophy about learning from experienced older um, mentors or from the older generation? What what's what's your thought about people in their fifties and sixties as far as you know going to them for advice? I, I wouldn't be here without without those sort of people. Maybe not that young. My first investor, Steve McDonald, I would not be here without him. Um, value-based investor. He um, messaged me when I was 13 and a half. I was on LinkedIn very early and he said, love what you're doing. Don't know what you're, you're actually doing. Um, love your profile. Let's catch up for a coffee when you're in Sydney or um, I'm in Brisbane. And we caught up for a coffee and he, he, he loved the idea. And I think having people who have been there and done that have been amazing. People like John Fairweather, he's been someone for me. He's 26 years old, former fashion designer, now turned um, an educational pioneer, uh, a, a, an entrepreneur that's connecting everyone in Brisbane. And um, for me, he's been awesome. People like Jan Owen, the CEO of the Foundation for Young Australians. I think th there are some people that I think I've learned so much from. And going back to that point, learning through experimentation, these people have been there and done that. They've 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 been they've done the hard yards of um, forming a team, getting rid of a team, um, having those hard conversations with people, and just yeah. being able to the power of social media, being able to send them a Facebook message, just like hey, having staff issues, I'm having team issues. What do I do? And I think that's been amazing, having access to some awesome people that are just there to to who want to help you, who want to see you succeed, um, have been um, really really amazing in my journey. Awesome stuff, um, Taj. Look, um, we're, we're here with um, Taj Pabari just for the listeners. And um, Taj is a 17-year-old inventor, social entrepreneur and educational pioneer and also the founder of 56 Creations. And we're talking about his uh, business that is pretty much innovating or disrupting the industry of education um, in, 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 in the kids' environment. Um, and speaking of which, I'd like to really explore technology and how technology is an important element in education and what is your you know insight on 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 where that's going uh, and and how you're using technology I guess to innovate yeah definitely so look stem skills so your science technology engineering math skills are the future uh, digital literacy skills have uh, di the required well, the need for digital literacy skills in the workplace have increased by over two hundred and twelve percent over the past three years and it's when we were seeing these stats we were just like wow look this is this is crazy because we don't think that a lot of young people are indeed digitally literate yes we were the generation uh that that knows how to use a computer we were born around phones computers tablets but that's not digital literacy digital literacy is being able to actually program it code it and we're seeing employers require these skills uh, big, big traditional institutions have recognized the fact and are investing huge amounts of money. Governments, corporates um, have uh, investing massive amounts of money into this because we're not exporting um, amazing um, or even a high number of STEM graduates. And what we're trying to do is, um, is, is get more young people um, immersed into the world of ICT, immersed into the world of STEM. And while I say that, I think the enterprising skills are, are quite important, the arts. So a whole e-STEM curriculum, so enterprising science, tech, engineering, arts and mathematics. I believe that's very holistic education. Um, the soft skills, we know how important they are, being able to communicate, public speak, etc. cetera. Um, but we're not teaching that at school. So think for, for the education system, STEM skills need to be at the forefront in on par with that, being able to speak. So having a class there, that's just allowing kids to practice their soft skills, I think would be amazing for the education system. Wouldn't it be amazing that we have young people actually coming out of high school or come the ability to, to actually persuade someone of their idea, not from a script, but through experience, through experience, through intuition, and we think that's that, that that's a vision we really want to see. It's interesting when you speak, uh, Taj, that you know the use of ter terminology, uh, technology terminology, just comes natural to you, and and obviously you've had seventeen years to adapt and learn that from the minute go. Yeah. Um, I remember my first exposure to a computer was when I was seventeen for the very first time because computers. <laughs> kind of came out roughly at that stage um, in, 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 the, in the 90s. Um, so 
to to really embrace what you're saying, um, you know, as, as somewhat of a veteran myself, can be challenging for the older generation. So, how do you sort of um, talk to parents that use the technology for their children, and how do they get their heads around what you're proposing for 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 the children? I don't know if you've got contact with the parents per se. Um, who actually yeah. is your target market? The parents or or the children per se? Look, there's a big cultural shift. Um, there's there, a lot of parents are uh, big advocates of restricting screen time. And the parents we, we speak to are, are doing that. And they're just like, hey, my kid spends too much time on their phone or my kid spends too much time on, on, on their computer. And we, th- we don't like that. Uh, we want to get rid of that and say, you know, we should be exposing the kids to screen time on a very regular basis. They should be allowed to embrace the world of technology. They should be allowed to experiment with phones, with tablets, with computers. So we think that's really important. And can you overdose on technology? Um, uh, yes and no. Um, I think there is... Um, Obviously, if you're gaming 24-7, that's wrong. And I, I'm not, I, I, I think that's wrong. That's completely wrong and that shouldn't happen. But a lot of kids are experimenting. They're starting blogs. They're vlogging. They're recording themselves, reflect on their life. And I think that is really powerful. And I think that's something parents should be re- very open to. With the power of social media, with the power of LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, these things can take, can take uh, kids very far. And instead of caging them from the world of ICT, let them embrace it. Let them make mistakes. Now, obviously, there's this rise of cyberbullying, all of that sort of thing. And obviously, there are issues with that. But for many kids, um, a lot of kids do want to experiment with LinkedIn. And I've met parents who are saying, hey, you no, know, we they, they can do that when they finish school. Um, or they should do that in their time, not in ours. And I think LinkedIn should be something that's integral for, um, that's something that should be taught at school. It should be set up at school. I met Steve, my first investor on LinkedIn. I met my, my whole team. I think except two people I've met on LinkedIn. And um, LinkedIn is such a powerful network. We met on LinkedIn. And I think that's just really powerful, being able to connect with people that you may not necessarily have access to in on a day-to-day setting at school, in high school, at university. You can send them a message and who knows, um, you have a very, very good chance of them replying. So I think um, LinkedIn is really powerful for all young people. And it's something I'd actually want to see schools pushing and parents pushing as well. I'm a, Absolutely. I'm an advocate for, for LinkedIn. In fact, we did meet that way. Um, and you, you talk about social media in a general sense, and I'd like to sort of steer that off also in, in, the, in the realm of PR and, 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 and marketing and branding. Um, obviously, with any great invention, product or service uh, like yours, um, the success also comes down to communicating that to the industry or throughout the globe. Um, and like, a, like I've said in, in the intro before, you've, you've been featured on a number of um, media outlets or channels um, like National Geographic, um, Sunrise, 60 Minutes. Fundamentally, what was the secret to your success in terms of being able to be noticed by these um, industry players with your product? Yeah, look, as I said before, I think we're, we're, we've been very lucky. Uh, we're very grateful to the media partners that have taken a liking to the story. Uh, and they, yeah, look, I think it was just about sharing the idea. We're a social enterprise with the goal of educating a million kids by 2020. And for us, it was just like, you know what, this is, um, this is our legacy. We, we can be the start of a new shift, a cultural shift of actually getting kids prepared for the real world, getting rid of this ideology that grades are be or end all. But you know what, success in tradition does not correlate to success in the real world. If you want to start a business, start a business. If you want to be, um, if you want to be in the Olympics, train hard, work hard, you could be that 1% because there's this big, I think, I, I know when at school, um, there's a lot of parents, there's a lot of teachers saying, oh, this is, there's a, you've got a 99% chance of failing, why don't you go into a more percentage-based industry? Or, hey, only one out of 100 people, one out of a million people can be, can be in the Olympics. You know what? You could be that one. And actually giving kids that power, that mindset, that they could be that one in a million, they could be that one in a million that's going to change the world. They could be that one in a million that could be the change that they want to see in the world. And I think just bringing the confidence back to the kids, um, we shared that the media loved our vision and thankfully they picked up our story. And obviously just having access to these people, people like Liz Hayes, David Kosh, Samantha Armitage, 
and so on have we've been really lucky and um yeah look big we 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 owe them a lot well congratulations on your efforts so far and um obviously that's that's proof of your amazing product but also your tenacity and your ability to communicate um Thank you. to 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 the external investors or, or stakeholders what you're all about um, I guess as we get closer to wrapping up the show, I, I want to sort of shift my attention to those listeners and I'm sure there are quite a few aspiring young entrepreneurs that are looking at you thinking, wow, how did you do it, Taj? And maybe today, tonight, they've, they've managed to get the recipe. Um, yeah. What general or specific advice would you give those aspiring entrepreneurs that are sitting there, bored out of their brains, maybe in, in, in year nine, year 10, doing, doing their studies, thinking, this is not for me, I want to start a business and make money. What, what is your... What are your words of wisdom for those people? Yeah, definitely. All righty. So I think it's, first of all, I want to, I think we've, there's been a lot of questions I know I've had with talks like this is, hey, why are you still at school? And the reason why I've stayed at school is because I'm day to day with my target audience. I've got the access to teachers who are actually going to be implementing my program and sharing my program to teach to their students. So that's why I've stayed at school. Um, and I think there's a lot of the, there's this big, the media is talking about, hey, Teenage entrepreneurs, they drop out of high school, they drop out of high, they drop out of high school, they drop out of university. Um, but I think I'm living, breathing proof of the fact that you don't need to drop out. You can still have uh, a successfully running business while still being in high school. So for the people in high school, don't drop out. There is a lot to learn from those last years. You learn a lot about patience. If it's not your target audience, you learn about, you, you learn to um, patience because you, there's a lot of days where I've hated being at school. It's like, hey, I come out of a meeting, like today, I've been in Sydney all day with some awesome people and um, tomorrow I'm going to be going to school at 8 a.m. And there's a big energy shift from high energy with my team in Sydney, high energy in the boardrooms, and then going back to school, doing business management where it just doesn't make sense and what we're learning there is just, is just useless. Um, and I think it teaches you about patience and I'm very impatient and I think a lot of entrepreneurs generally are quite impatient as well. So school teaches you a patient, so don't drop out. Um, however, if you do see yourself, if you do, if you do want to have um, a life outside of the classroom, pursue it. In school, we've got, we're only at school 8 to 3 p.m. We've got no other commitment. We've got from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. to work. We've got, when we come back from school, we've got 4 p.m. when we come back to 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., 12 p.m. to work as well. So you have all the time in the world to start. So you have the passion, take the action, magic will uh, ultimately happen. Um, work hard. And as I said before, um, whether you want to start a business or not, I think everyone should start a business. It will teach you so, so much. I'm not saying everyone should be in business, but yeah, soft skills I think is really important. Regardless of what field, you want to be in medicine, you want to be in entrepreneurship, you want to be in business, soft skills are fundamental. Fantastic advice, Taj. I'm sure the uh, listeners are running away crazily uh, implementing their strategy for success, and I've certainly done that in the last half hour. Uh, and just to wrap up, some of the uh, little gems or, or golden nuggets that um, Taj has shared to me to, on tonight's live show um, is about learning how to communicate effectively, uh, adapting to failure, and in fact, I love the patience uh, aspect of that. Um, also developing company culture when it comes to leadership and embracing and managing your people, that's key. Um, and also providing an opportunity and I guess an incentive to those who are involved so that they remain focused and equally committed. Uh, and surround yourself with like-minded, uh, enthusiastic people of all ages, uh, which will enrich your learning learning um, abilities and, and, and process. So I guess um, just to wrap up, uh, Taj, and just for the listeners, I just wanted to announce uh, our next show, which will be on the 29th of November. Um, we have Vin Yang, hopefully I've pronounced his name correctly, and he's a successful uh, entrepreneur himself, but in the world of magic. So um, hopefully as I'm talking to him, I won't disappear in, 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 in transmission. Um, and we'll see how far we go with that show. Uh, but just for tonight, Taj, I, I do want to thank you immensely for your time. It's been really interesting to actually talk to you. Um, I'm just um, amazed to see your wisdom um, and, and your experience so far for such a young guy, uh, someone who has 25 years of less experience than I, yet I can really relate to his story so well. So I'm sure you'll do exceptionally well. And um, I guess if someone wanted to get in contact with you, Taj, what's, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, sure. Facebook, connect to my page, 56 page, Twitter, love tweeting. So yeah, send me a tweet if you have any questions. 
Awesome. So um, look, um, thanks again, and um, we'll, we'll touch base in the near future. Cheers. Thanks for having me.